Why we've chosen to elevate the flagship program is because it represents an opportunity for us to really ramp up our climate advocacy work for and with children, right? And why are we doing this? Because we realize that climate change is a big challenge to all the initiatives that we want to achieve. We have a responsibility to ensure that um, children's rights are prioritized and upheld um, and the key issues affecting them in Kenya are addressed. Now, undoubtedly, the key issue affecting children in Kenya is climate change. Um, and so, yeah, it's our duty and our responsibility to really focus on this issue. And this is what the next flagship program will focus on, collaborate with children and make sure that their rights are prioritized within climate action. And they're also meaningfully engaged in the climate change conversation as well. How climate has affected our life? What basically we are looking at is um, coming up with a program that ensures children are able to not just achieve their, their full potential, but us being innovative in our thinking and conforming with the trends, current trends, as we design the program. So Kenya is quite ahead in terms of adopting technology for development and we want to tap into that so that we develop innovative high impact solution to some of the complex issues that children face in this country. Climate change makes air pollution worse and with that comes an increase to respiratory illnesses for children, for instance asthma and pneumonia then uh, it changes the pattern of disease-bearing vectors like mosquitoes and therefore, you know, diseases like malaria, which we had seen declining, might start rising again. When it comes to education, uh, when we have extreme climate uh, events, certain areas are cut off and children cannot go to school. And even within school, if there's not adequate infrastructure, there's risks posed to children being in school when climate shocks happen. It affects food production and water sources. And when these are affected, children do not have adequate nutrition. They can get malnourished and a malnourished child will potentially be a stunted child. A stunted child will not reach their full developmental potential we have gotten to a point where children have significantly even contributed to the county integrated development plans, save the children, mobilizing these children in youth networks to be part of that process, the visioning process for the counties. We have, you know, led more than 40,000 children in youth in 21 counties to even develop charters that were used to influence the current generation of the county integrated development plans. We will not only work with civil society organisations, we will also work with various government stakeholders as well that we have strong relationships with and ensure that there's also meaningful collaboration between civil society and the government stakeholders so that children's rights are really prioritised within government climate change plans and policies and there's an enabling policy environment for children within the climate change space. There's been lots of promises made by global policymakers regional and national policymakers. It's time to change that rhetoric to action. And we hope to drive that very strongly with children. I hope with this project that in the future, we will really see the prioritization of children within the climate change space and their prioritization of their rights. The overall goal is really to improve climate change development outcomes for children and to build their voice within the climate change space. Success is when every child is able to be involved in the solutions around climate change, where every voice for the child counts, where our government, as well as all the stakeholders will bear duty for rights are able to look at climate change as a priority now and not tomorrow for the sake of the children of this country.
we want to strengthen the partnerships and coalitions that share this commitment, with children being at the center and having their voices really propel how we shape the messages that we put forth to policymakers on what needs to be done about climate change.